specialist. I'm gonna call it that. Um, uh, and so when they asked me to do this, uh, I think the approach we're gonna have is just to sort of uh, tell the story of my life, um, which um, is like in three acts, I think. Um, and the first one uh, involved, a, I grew up in, I think, in a series of bubbles of different uh, shapes and forms. Um, the first one is sort of uh, my demeanor. I was born with a very big head. Uh, not like metaphorically, I didn't like touch down in its own dance, have no womb, and swipe the placenta. Like a, a very large, physical, I still occasionally apologize to my mom head. Uh, and I was also born with a, a huge underbite. So like my face was like... Uh, so like basically from like when I was like a little kid, like this doll, I, I appeared between my big head and my underbite, I appeared like as if there were a Frankenstein in the universe that the Pet Boys live in. <laughs> That's what I looked like. And then I had puberty like super early and super quick. Like I was like uh, about as tall as I am now in fifth grade, uh, but it still had a gigantic, gigantic head. Uh, so I looked like if there was like a Slender Man in the universe that the Pet Boys live in. <laughs> Uh, that was me. And I think like because of those physical uh, uh, appearance stuff, I like was a very introverted kid. Um, or it may have, been, may have been like the physical weight of my head made me look inward. <laughs> but I was always like I was always like pretty pretty introverted. So that was like one bubble I sort of I sort of lived in. Um, another one was cultural because I grew up in South Carolina. And um, that's like the state where whenever they say it on the news, your first thought is, oh this can't be good. <laughs> Uh, it's a very like culturally uh, conservative, like sort of small town. It's Columbia was the city I grew up in. Uh, like you know, just sort of had our own little uh, bubble that I lived in, and we were like our level of wealth wasn't like shh, like working class, but it wasn't like upper class. It was like sort of like we lived in like the third best subdivision in our area. <laughs> and we like. We drove like the third best model of Oldsmobile, um, so it was like sort of that, and so that was another bubble um, that I grew up in. And the um, the third bubble that I grew up in was a, a political bubble um, because in South Carolina, uh, just a real quick background, and I'm not exaggerating here. Like during the summers in South Carolina, every single day is between 100 and 105 thousand degrees. <laughs> so hot that you like can you can either go to the pool or stay inside and like since I was a little bit introverted I would I wouldn't go to the pool that wasn't really my thing but I would stay inside during like summer days and what I would do during those summer days was and I, I'm, again I'm not exaggerating for three hours every day from noon to three I would listen to the Rush Limbaugh radio program <laughs> <laughs> That's a twelve year old I, and like it's like it's like a fun story and kids are stupid and you tell the kid like hey and I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. <laughs> so I listened to Rush Limbaugh constantly, and my mom hated it. She, like, cause she couldn't go outside either, so she was like trapped in the house, and she tried to get to the furthest uh, point away in the house, but I blared it, because I, I was an asshole. <laughs> uh, and so she hated it so much, and I, uh, and, like, I, my whole family hated it. I remember I, when I was like thinking of the story, I remember this and like texted my brother and I was like, hey Jason, do you like remember when I would listen to Rush the Ball? And he responded, haha, yeah, you were a dickhead about that. <laughs> <laughs> and like it, on my text, like it says like sent the same minute that I sent the question. <laughs> it doesn't do the rapidness of his response justice. It was like I, I pressed send and it's like, holy shit, how can you type that fast? <laughs> Uh, and my mom hated it so much. Uh, and my mom is like the sweetest, nicest woman in the whole world. Uh, she, I'm the youngest of six kids, um, so she's done a lot uh, for the world. <laughs> <laughs> she also dealt with my fucking huge melon coming out of her. Um, and we also, uh, the one thing that I'm like most impressed about my mom is um, when I was a junior in high school, going into my junior year in high school, uh, my family moved to Brazil. And maybe it was because my dad worked for a car company, or maybe it's because he's like a cool Nazi hunter. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, is that the car company that my dad worked for sent us, um, sent us to language school in, in Brazil. It's like, for my mom, who at the time was like, uh, uh, I'm trying to do the math on her age, like a 56 year old woman. Uh, to move to Brazil, that's like a huge old deal. That's like a really big, like, brave thing to like uproot your life and do that. And so we went to language school for uh, a month, uh, and 
It's also very difficult for an old woman to learn language or an old man to learn language. Like old people just you can't teach them. Like that's where that dog new tricks statement comes from. <laughs> but like just trying to teach an old person a new language because they will look at you blankly and you'll say like, no, I don't. What? I can't. I can't do this. Um, and we had one of those teachers who, like, I don't know if you ever took a foreign language in school, but, like, some teachers are good and they'll tell you things in English and then tell you what words mean, and others are bad and they only speak the language you're supposed to speak. <laughs> you don't know what the fuck's going on at any point in time. Uh, and we had one of those teachers, uh, it was a Portuguese, uh, it was, it was uh, uh, just a stern-faced Portuguese speaker, and she would like just yell at my mom and say like "chiga, chiga," which means you, you say it, you say it, but she would say it like you say it. Uh, <laughs> and my mom was just like so freaked out by that and just so frustrated with it. Like she broke down crying four times over the course of a month, and like she stressed a when we would go to restaurants all the time, and she would order shrimp and just eat as much shrimp as she could because she was like, so upset with the process. <laughs> place known for its water creatures. Uh, and so she, uh, and that was like one of the things I learned. Anyway, anyway uh, she's very great and I love her so much uh, for doing that. Um, so uh, to get these bubbles stripped away is like sort of the end of this arc of my life. Um, when we moved to Brazil, like that sort of definitely stripped away the cultural bubble uh, because it's uh, not a conservative uh, place. It's a party place where I could just drink beer. I could go out to a bar and drink beer and I start making out with girls. Uh, and just really living it up. Um, but I still had my like political bubble on, like I was still conservative. Uh, around the time that this happened, it was like when the Clinton uh, Lewinsky thing was going on, and I was just like a little seventeen-year-old shithead. Who was like, well, you know, the integrity of marriage and the integrity of like, what the fuck me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I still had a political bubble. Um, it wasn't until um, um, I moved back. After I graduated high school, uh, my family stayed in Brazil for a while, and I moved back to the uh, States to, to make money, because I'm an idiot, and I wish I'd spent those extra three months in Brazil. Uh, no, but I worked at a factory. Um, I got a factory job for three months. My job was to shave knuckles, which is, I know, it sounds like, uh, like grooming an ape at a zoo. Um, but it, what, what it is, is the knuckles are part of a car that, like, it's by the wheel. I honestly don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> to explain it, it's like, Josh, you're making this up, man. Uh, so I worked at a factory and I was like, I shaved the knuckles, uh, which is like, I took an iron stick and I like shaved burrs off of these little car parts that came out of an assembly line. And I love that, because like the introvert of me loves that, uh, like very repetitive tasks. Like, I think I could work in a factory for the rest of my life, like starting tomorrow, and I'd be super happy. Like when I go on vacations, I just do puzzles. I'm like very like process oriented, or what some people call not fun at all. <laughs> and like actually being out in the real world is when like a lot of our bubbles of growing up are stripped away and that was definitely the moment where mine was uh, to realize like all that shit that uh, Rush Limbaugh had told me when I was a kid is like, oh, that's probably not like how the world actually works. Uh, so then that was like sort of that part of my life. Thanks.